Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michalis. I'm the market analyst here at HF Markets. And today we're going to be looking at a very interesting subject. Personally, I think it's a very important subject because it's really looking at different strategies and different ways in order to take something which is very difficult in the market, but to use it in a way which you can trade and use that negative factor in your advantage. So it's a very interesting webinar because number one, we're gonna look at different ways and different methods in which you can use certain price actions and certain techniques to obtain signals and to determine, to predetermine how the price of certain assets are going to move. But in addition to that, we are in a sense lowering the risk because we're taking something which can be for a beginner, at least something difficult within the market, but we're going to use that to our advantage. So this is why it's such a great topic today. Uh, now, before we get started and looking at today's uh, webinar, uh, just a very quick introduction. Now, as part of today's webinar, we're going to be looking at three different methodologies, three different uh, ways, a very simple way of saying it, three different ways uh, to obtain signals and how to minimize certain risks within the market. But very quickly, we're going to do an introduction. Just two slides, very quick introduction uh, to HFM markets, uh, to uh, myself, for individuals that haven't previously watched one of my webinars. I mean, most people have, uh, and most people know me because I've been in the industry for 10 years now. Uh, but a very quick introduction for those people that don't know me, and also a very quick introduction for somebody who has potentially never traded before. So uh, let's get started. Uh, very first thing I want to mention is that, you know, these webinars are here not to give uh, financial advice. They're here for educational purposes. Now, if somebody wants financial advice, there's lots of financial advisors out there and they can seek financial advice. Uh, these webinars, even though they're not here to tell you, go and buy this, go and sell this, and so on and so forth, it is here to provide as much educational material as possible in order for you to be able to be active in the financial trading markets with knowledge and with confidence and expertise. Now, of course, this is what everybody wants to, of course, achieve. Now, the second and last thing I want to mention as part of this slide is that your investment is 100% fully in your control. Uh, also, I can see one person has put his hand up. Um, great to see that you've got a question. Please note there's a section which you can write the question. Now, of course, we'll answer the question live as part of the webinar. But if you put your hand up, I don't know what the question is. Um, so last thing I wanted to mention is, of course, you have full control over your account. And of course, we have no control over the price of cryptocurrencies or stocks uh, or currency pairs. Uh, the Prices are the same uh, everywhere within the financial trading markets. We have no control over them. They're priced based on the order flow theory. Some people know it as the supply and demand theory. Uh, and because of this, uh, you have to know and be aware that, of course, the market is volatile. The market moves up and down. Today, we're going to look at how to use that, not as a disadvantage, but how to use that as an advantage and how to use it in your favor. Uh, but people need to understand that as with all investments, the market's volatile, there's a risk to the capital that you are investing. It's important that we understand this, that we're comfortable with it before proceeding to a full uh, investment. And I always say to people, you know, start off small, open a very, very minimum trade, which is a 0.01 lot. Don't think about profit. Don't think about uh, necessarily the PL of your account but more think about uh, your success rate and your reward to risk ratio. Because if you're not thinking about profits and you're opening the very smallest trade possible, there's not gonna be a lot of volatility on your account. That's number one. And number two, if you're looking at the success rate and the reward to risk ratio, your emotions while trading are gonna be much more controllable, in which case you're gonna have a better experience and a better outcome potentially as well. Uh, whereas if you're looking at your success rates and your reward to risk ratio, as your reward to risk ratio becomes more competitive, we looked at that last week. Uh, and in addition to this, as your success rate increases, then of course you can increase the trade size. So for example, 
you know, I've joined, I've been trading for two months. I haven't thought about uh, profits in any way, shape or form. Uh, I started with a 50% success rate and now I've got a 75% success rate. So maybe now is a time where I'll consider slightly increasing my trade size uh, and then slightly increasing it further and so on and so forth. And as we gain experience, we can continue to do so. Uh, and then, of course, as we do, we're thinking more and more and taking advantage of profits. Uh, this is the last thing I want to mention. We're going to go straight to looking at today's uh, topic. Uh, what I want to mention, ladies and gentlemen, is that, of course, um, these webinars are a great opportunity, even though we're looking at presentations, it's a great opportunity for, for you to ask uh, questions. People always say to me, you know, I've had this scenario within the market, if you can help me uh, to avoid this difficulty or take advantage of X, Y, Z, this is a great opportunity now. All questions will be looked at. I will look at every single question and I will answer all questions live as part of the webinar. So on the GoToWebinar software, you will see a section where you can write questions and I will answer it live. Uh, a little bit about my uh, background. Most people know me, to be honest, because uh, I've been in the industry for a very long time. I originally started off as a financial advisor. That was in London. Uh, that was going back uh, I started 10 years ago. Uh, I was a financial advisor for four years, actually slightly more than four and a half. Uh, and now I've been a market analyst for a further uh, six years. Um, so this is a little bit about myself. I'm based here in Europe in the head office. I am a licensed financial advisor, both in the UK and with European equity, uh, European regulators uh, as well. So today we're looking at pullbacks. There's different types of pullbacks. We're going to look at the different types of pullbacks. Uh, a lot of people say to me, you know, the volatility within the market is very difficult. I'm trying to take advantage of the trend, uh, but I keep entering at the point that I enter the market moves against me. There's a lot of volatility. The market moves in waves. How can I avoid the waves against me and take advantage of when the price starts to move back into my favor and so on and so forth. This is what we're looking at today because a lot of people, they continuously say to me as part of webinars, I struggle with the pullbacks. This is something very negative for me, really help, hurts me in terms of emotion, hurts me in terms of my profits and so on and so forth. So we're gonna look at how to take that negative thing, negative for uh, beginners, uh, experienced traders myself, actually, it's a very big positive in terms of pullbacks. Uh, and I'll explain exactly why in a moment. Uh, how we can take that difficulty and actually use it in our favor, because there's a lot of advantages to pullbacks. Uh, and it can really help you to take advantage of the trend. Some people may say to me, how is price movement against the trend going to help me trade the trend? Uh, whereas actually, me and myself, when I was a financial advisor and I was working with uh, fund managers and institutions which held a massive amount of equity, very large funds, uh, the most important thing to them was the price, the price they were entering. They wanted to enter at the best possible price. So whenever there was a correction in the market, whenever there was a, a large retracement, even back when there was a stock market crash during the trade wars, uh, it was like paradise for them. Whereas beginner traders really struggled. So we're gonna look at how you can avoid that struggle and take advantage of it. Uh, we're gonna start off slow and slowly, slowly, we're gonna look at the uh, strategies. Today, we're gonna look at three different strategies on how to take advantage of these price movements. Um, I've got a question, I'll quickly, very quickly uh, answer this question. Uh, somebody says he's never traded before, he wants educational sessions. Uh, he said he clicked on the button and wanted to see what uh, sessions and classes are for beginners. Uh, this is, this webinar here is a session for beginners. It's not for advanced uh, traders. We had the webinar for advanced traders a few days ago and we looked at very advanced things such as Delta statistics, uh, depth of markets and so on and so forth. But today, ladies and gentlemen, and for this gentleman, this is a perfect webinar for beginners. 
but of course you can go onto YouTube and there's lots of webinars and classes uh, which are based for beginners as well. Uh, so first things, first point, uh, what are pullbacks? We're speaking about pullbacks. What are pullbacks? Why is it difficult? Uh, and how can we start to take advantage of it? Uh, so this is a very basics, okay? But we're gonna start to go slightly more advanced slowly. Uh, now, when you monitor a trend, and we will look at some examples of trends, uh, and you know, when we're looking at price action, if we look at the price action theory, uh, there's only four types of movements that can happen within the market. Uh, people say to me a lot of the time, you know, trading is so difficult because a thousand things can happen. It's actually incorrect. No, a thousand things can't happen. Uh, within the price action theory, only four types of price movements uh, exist within the market. Now, the first price movement is a trend. Okay, so this is, you know, price number one. Price number two is the impulse wave. So basically the larger price movements which are in favor of the trend. So this is price movement number two. Uh, then we have the corrective waves, which are here. Okay, so the price movement against the trend. This is price movement number uh, three. Uh, then we have the correction, which is basically uh, losing all the price movement which you have gained. So it's larger than a retracement. If we think about a retracement, uh, a retracement, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you get that big price movement upwards. You may think it's a trend uh, and then the retracement forms. The retracement is a smaller price movement when comparing it with the impulse wave. Whereas if it's a correction, it's a larger price movement or the same size. So you can see, for example, here, this is a low. Uh, we moved all the way up to here, it's gone back to the previous low. Whereas if it's a retracement, it's not gone back to the previous low. It loses that downward momentum at a higher price. So this is a correction. This is uh, actually uh, the price action number three. So we've got one, two, three. So we have the trend, we have these impulse waves, we have the retracements, and then we have the correction. And then we have the price range. Now the price range is very little volatility and sideways price movement like this. These are the only types of price movements that you're gonna see within the market. And we'll go onto the charts. We're gonna look at a lot of charts today. You will notice these are the only four things that you're going to see. You're gonna see trends. As part of the trend, you'll see retracement, corrections, uh, and also the impulse wave, most importantly. And the other, only other type of price movement is uh, the price range, in which case it could be a larger price range, such as a reverting uh, market condition, or it could be uh, one with not a lot of volatility, most likely potentially after uh, news and a lot of volatility or just before news is about to be released. Uh, so, you know, people say to me a lot of the time, there's so many things that can happen. It's, it's incorrect. Uh, get your mindset where it should be, because it's massively gonna help you. Don't look at the charts and think, and think to yourself, a million things can happen, because you're gonna find trading very difficult. Only four things can happen, okay? So when you monitor a trend, like we looked at now, it's never a straight price movement. Whether we're looking at an upward trend or we're looking at a downward trend, you'll never see a straight price movement. You always will see volatility, price rejection patterns, uh, symmetrical triangles, retracements, corrections, and so on and so forth. Now, what is a pullback? A pullback is the area where the price actually moves against the trend. So, for example, here you can see when you monitor a trend, you will see areas where the price dips. Uh, sorry, I misspelled this here. I do apologize. Uh, you will notice that the price dips at some point, or you will also notice that at a certain point, the price takes a break. Now this is referring to an upward trend. So if we look at an upward trend, whenever the price dips like this, and like this, and like this, this is the pullback, okay? Uh, or potentially it could be when it takes a break. So it could be price movement like this before continuing the upward trend. Now the same thing applies to both downward and upward trends, so both bearish and bullish trends. Now, the price, ladies and gentlemen, 
is based on the order flow theory. Now, some people think it's based on supply and demand. Uh, if we're going to look at it in a very simple way, yes, it is based on supply and demand. But if we're going to look at it slightly more advanced to get a better understanding of the trend, because there's volatility all, all of the time. If it's based on supply and demand, why is there so much volatility? Why is it going up and down every single second? Uh, whereas if you're looking at go to a shop, for example, let's say to a, a shopping mall and you're looking at clothes, uh, it's not a different price every single day. Why? Because it's price based on supply and demand. Whereas the market is very volatile. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's less supply, and that's why. It doesn't mean that the number of buyers always change, and that's why. It's because it's based on the order flow theory and not on the supply and demand theory, such as food and clothing and so on and so forth. So what is the order flow theory? The order flow theory is basically uh, the auction, for example. If we think about an auction, an auction, ladies and gentlemen, you have sellers and you have buyers. So, for example, we may have a stock and the stock has many prices like this. Uh, and let's say as the price increases like so, uh, let's say we've got shareholders and let's say 10 shareholders uh, sell the stock. Now, a lot of people are used to on the platform because we're trading CFDs and not the actual stock itself. Um, people are very used to uh, clicking sell and it instantly sells or clicking buy and it instantly buys. In the real market, you are actually put into a queue. So if you click sell, for example, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the price, uh, you're not actually going to sell anything just yet. Uh, the price will look at, and the platform will look at, how many buyers there is. So, for example, if there's zero buyers here, the price will decline. And then let's say there's two buyers. And the idea is it will keep declining because the lower the price gets, the more likely people are going to be willing to buy at the lower price. So let's say, for example, it declines to two, and then it declines here, and then another three. Uh, buyers enter the market, it will keep declining until we get to a price where you're able to fill these 10 sales. So there's 10 people who want to sell, the price will keep declining until there's 10 buyers. And the same thing happens as well, there may be 10 buyers, but there's not 10 sellers that are willing to sell at the current price. So the price keeps increasing uh, until we get to a price where there's enough sellers in order to fill our buy trades. So this is how the market is basically working. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at a lot of volatility. Whereas when we're looking at other assets like clothes and food and so on and so forth, there's not that much volatility. Here is different because it's based on all the flow theory. So what type of pullbacks are there? Okay, we're going to go through this very quickly because we've kind of already mentioned it and I want to go straight to looking at some examples and some strategies because we've got three strategies to go through today. The first type of pullback, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget the pullback is all type of price movement against the trend. Now, the retracement, okay? So here we have the retracement. Let's start off with the retracement because it's very easy to understand. So when we're looking at an upward trend like this, these small temporary price movements are retracements. You will notice that if we compare the size of this wave to this wave, the retracement is considerably smaller. So if the price continues to decline to the previous low, so this will be the previous low, it is a correction. So the difference between the correction and the retracement is that a correction is a larger price movement. The retracement is a weak price movement, but of course, as a trend and as a trader trying to take advantage of the trend, a lot of people want to avoid the retracement because people want to trade when the price is moving in their favor. Uh, then, ladies and gentlemen, so we've looked at two, we've got the retracement, we've got the correction. Then we have uh, the price range, which is basically a break. This is the price range as well. So again, still anybody trading and speculating the upward price movement, 
they don't want to see a sideways trend like this because um, you're not going to be earning any profit as part of that sideways trend. Uh, and of course, profit is what we want to be earning. So let's very quickly launch a, a poll, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to launch a poll now. Uh, I'll allow everybody 50 seconds to answer the poll. So is a pullback positive or negative for traders? I can see most people have answered. Let's wait to see what everybody answers. It's almost 50-50. I'll give everybody just um, 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds to answer the poll, ladies and gentlemen. Five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. So we have 70% believe it's positive and 30% uh, believe that it is negative. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, it is something which is positive. And as I mentioned, you know, from my experience with very large institutions, very large hedge funds uh, and financial uh, advisors, uh, retracement and corrections is something which is uh, positive. Why? Because a lot of people, you know, they say to themselves, especially beginners, uh, beginners tend to fall into two traps. Uh, trap number one is whenever the price increases, they always think to themselves the price is going to decline and they always trade against the trend and they get sucked up into the wrong direction. Okay, so the bad habit that beginners fall into, number one is whenever the price declines, they always want to buy and whenever the price increases, they always want to sell. Whereas actually there's a lot more advantages to trading in the direction of the price movement. Because you have to think to yourself, you know, there's a reason why the price is increasing. It's not just a coincidence, not just a one-off. We look at, for example, the NASDAQ. Uh, over the past two years, it's increased massively, massively. So if everybody continuously, whenever it went to a new high sold, they would have been a very unhappy, unsuccessful trader. Um, so this is a very good example. The second bad habit, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, that when the price increases to a new high, uh, they get uncomfortable with that price level. So people, for example, will say to themselves, uh, you know, I'm um, looking at a price movement like this. I entered some buys here. I entered some buys here. I entered a buy here. I entered a buy here. And I entered a buy here. And now I've got to this level here. I don't want to enter any buys. Uh, I'm very uncomfortable with this level. Uh, so the retracement is very useful here. Because what actually happens is as the price declines, it takes the price back to that level that you're comfortable with. Because when the price increases and it's very high and we've got a new high and we've got a breakout, uh, people start to become uncomfortable. Uh, this emotion though, it's good. It's just about using it in the right way. Okay, and this is what we're going to look at as part of today's webinar. Uh, because we've got about two more slides this one and another one, and we're gonna go straight to look at how to use strategy, uh, strategies. We're gonna look at three strategies and how to take advantage of these price movements. Now, what is a breakout, okay? This is also a very big difficulty that people uh, have spoken to me about. Uh, you know, they say to me, you know, I've watched a lot of videos online, not from HFN, uh, but from, you know, influencers, other traders, educators. Uh, what I would say to people is, you know, you really need to be careful because a lot of these educators and influencers, they've got no licenses, they've never had experience, they've ne a lot of people never have traded or they have traded and they've not really ever been successful at trading. So you've got to be really careful about who you're getting educational material uh, from. And uh, what a lot of people's uh, people say is, you know, as the price increases like this and then it retraces and declines, uh, you know, you've got the breakout level here. So as the price increases like this, uh, you know, from here, trade upwards. And then it retraces again like this. We draw another line from here, you know, trade upwards again. Now, what is the issue with this, ladies and gentlemen? The issue with this 
is very simply, if you trade that at the breakout, you've missed either half or most of the price movement. So if you're not very quick to enter and very quick to exit, you're most likely going to experience a, a difficult trade or an unsuccessful trade, should we say. Why? Because if you trade at a breakout, you've missed most of the price movement. So we're going to look at how to avoid this difficulty today as well. Because as soon as retracements happen, as soon as these different types of pullbacks happen, uh, the difficulty is uh, a lot of traders want to trade at the breakout. If you're trading at the breakout, you have to wait sometimes a very long time. And a lot of the time you miss most of the price movement. Whereas as a price is increasing or decreasing, if it's a downward trend and you're waiting for the breakout, that's a lot of price movement that you can be speculating and taking advantage of. So it's just about having the right technique, the right signals, indicators, and method in order to be able to determine how to be able to enter before the breakout and to take, the, take advantage of the larger price uh, movement rather than the smallest uh, price movement possible. So what is a breakout? The breakout is when the price of the asset moves beyond a specific price level. The price level is normally a price which is a cycle of a, a psychological importance to the trader. Uh, so, for example, if uh, you know the price is increasing in value and it loses momentum at this price, increases again, loses momentum, and at the same consecutively, you're declining at that same level. It's a psychological level for traders. So. If the price breaks out above this level like this, it's a breakout. Uh, we could refer to it in terms of a trend. So for example, you know, trends that trade like this, this is the breakout. Uh, this is the breakout. This is the breakout as well, okay? So again, you're really seeing, I want to look at this actually for the example, because I'm drawing this. I want to show you a real example from the charts from today. Uh, so we'll, we'll, I'll show you the breakout on the chart. I think that's a better option. So different types of breakouts. You could have the breakout of a resistance, like we just saw, which is definitely a psychological level. Uh, it could be a support level, or it could be an all-time high, all-time low, uh, which again really triggers certain uh, psychological trading. Uh, again, especially amongst beginners, because something becomes extremely cheap. They think to themselves, "Let's buy it at some point. It's going to increase in value." doesn't always work out that way though, uh, which is why we're looking at today's webinar. Uh, but support again is very simply, you know, if the price declines to a level, uh, buyers re-enter and you get an imbalance in order flow causing the price to increase and it declines again, same level, same thing happens, same level, same thing happens. This is a support line. Um, don't want to give too much um, uh, significance to support and resistance level uh, because it's very basic. Uh, we cannot base trading strategies based on a line. Uh, very simply, you know, trading is not that easy. It's not art. We're not in an art class, in which case, you know, which coloring in between the lines. Uh, trading is not that simple. It's more about the psychology behind that price. Okay. Uh, you know, there's a lot of educators online that say, you know, trade based on the support and resistance point, uh, trade on the breakout and so on and so forth. Trading is not that easy. We're not in an art class, in which case it's just random scribbly lines uh, and that's going to make you a profitable trader. Unfortunately, you cannot uh, be a profitable trader using those methods. And again, I go back to this is why a lot of these educators, you know, they're not licensed financial advisors. You know, people can go on to uh, the FCA and go on to SISEC and look at uh, licensed and approved individuals and they'll see my name there. Um, if you go and search for these influencers, you won't see anybody there. So a lot, there's a reason for this. A lot of them, they've never traded a lot, of, you know, or if they have traded, they see up and down uh, performances or experiencing a loss. So again, we need to be cautious. Um, price ranges, you can have a breakout of price range. A lot of people, again, on the internet say this, uh, you know, if the price starts to move sideways like this, draw uh, a bullish breakout and a bearish breakout, if it drops like this, uh, then, you know, at this point, speculate the decline. 
what you actually will see within the market is most of the time that this happens, this will happen. Okay. So again, you need to be cautious about these educators. Uh, but we're going to look, ladies and gentlemen, of you know these difficulties and these areas of the market where you know you're trying to trade in the direction of the trend and take advantage of the markets, uh, the market's volatility and price movement uh, in order to profit. We're really going to look at today how you can use this volatility, how to use the pullbacks in order to enter and take advantage of the price movement. Uh, and then we've got uh, price patterns as well. Now, I don't want to go through too many price patterns because there's so many thousands of different types of price patterns. And again, uh, I don't want anybody to fall into the trap of, you know, there's a price pattern you should trade based on the price pattern. Uh, it's not always that simple. There's more advanced techniques for you to take into consideration, even as a beginner trader. You know, there's a lot of more advanced, reasonable methods to analyze the market that even beginners can use. Um, but an, a, a very few, exa few examples. So for example, there's the head and shoulder pattern is where the price does something like this. Uh, we've got the symmetrical uh, triangle pattern where the price does something like this. This is a symmetrical triangle pattern. So you can have breakouts of these levels, basically. So, you know, you've got at the breakout level here, it could break out, or with the symmetrical triangle, it could break out like this. So you're breaking out of the pattern. But again, what I want to explain is very simply what a breakout is. Uh, I don't want people to give too much importance to price patterns uh, because they're very weak signals. Um, I want people to use more advanced reasonable uh, methods which are based actually on uh, the mathematics around trading uh, methods which are proven and used by institutions and so on and so forth so let's uh, have another poll very quickly i only leave this poll uh, just for 25 seconds so let's answer it as quickly as possible guys so do you trade uh, do you try and trade the breakout? How many people try and trade the breakout? I'm guessing we're going to have a lot of people that try and trade the breakout. And if not, I'm guessing a lot of these beginners, um, what they want to do is when the price becomes very expensive, they try and speculate the decline. When the price becomes very cheap, they try and speculate the price increase. So trading against the trend. So let's just five more seconds and let's end the poll. All right, so let's end it there. So we have 70% uh, try and trade the breakout. So it's most of uh, the individuals watching today's webinar. Uh, and we have 30% that don't try and trade the breakout. And by the way, if anybody has any scenarios, uh, what they want to talk about, their experience and so on and so forth, feel free to. Uh, so very quick example. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this slide. I want to go to start straight away on the next slide, looking at techniques and uh, looking at methods and strategies. This is a downward trend. Now we can look at this larger downward trend, uh, in which case, you know, we have the impulse wave here, we have the impulse wave here, we have the impulse wave here. The pullback is this. This. These are the pullbacks, and then we've got the sideways trend like this. This, ladies and gentlemen, is based on the longer term uh, price movement, which is important, but less important, especially for individual trading and CFDs, because we want to take advantage of the short term price movement. So for those individuals, you know, this is actually the trend. This is the impulse wave. This is the retracement. Why is it a retracement? Because this is the high. And it's not increased back to that previous high. So it's a retracement because it's a smaller price movement against the trend. So a smaller temporary price movement against the trend. The next impulse wave is here. Again, we have a retracement. Uh, then we've got the next impulse wave. We have a retracement again. Next impulse wave, we have a retracement. Next impulse wave. Now we have a correction. Why? Because this is the previous high, and you can see we've gone to the previous high again. Then we have another 
now it's an actual impulse wave. It's not a retracement or a correction. But in terms of the larger price movement, you know, it's more or less correct into this previous high. Then we've got the continuation there. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's more than a million types of price movements that can happen within the market. There is four different types of price movements. So, you know, these individuals that said to me, um, in the front of the screen, and I find them difficult to trade because there's a million types, a million things that can potentially happen. Within the market, there's only four types of price movements that can happen. Only four types of price movements. It's not a thousand things. So when you're starting your analysis, you know, just this thought, just getting this right, is going to significantly help you. I don't want to spend too much time on that slide because uh, I want to go to strategies now. So are pullbacks bad for traders? So when the price increases, investors fear that they've missed the price movement or that the price is too expensive. Uh, this still applies to bearish trends. So if you look here, for example, at the trend uh, example, this is a bearish trend. So, you know, when the price, you know, increases, decreases down to here, a lot of people think it's too cheap. So I'm going to keep declining uh, or, you know, it's too low and I've missed my opportunity. So this is what a lot of people uh, think. Pullbacks, though, ladies and gentlemen, is a positive thing. Why? Because it gives you a better entry point. It's like, for example, uh, I bought a property uh, about a month and a half ago. Actually, it's almost two months. Um, let's say you are buying a property. Somebody came to you and said, would you like to buy this house for half a million? Uh, you say no. Uh, they come to you next day, would you like to buy it for half a million? You say no. Next day again, would you like to buy this house for half a million? You say no, I'm not interested. The next day he comes and he says to you, would you like to buy the house for 470,000? Mm. Okay, so this is something now potentially I want to take advantage of. It's the same scenario with pullbacks. The pullback is just giving you a better entry point. Uh, so we need to think about it the exact same way as an auction. Like I said, you know, assets they're based not on supply and demand a lot of you know educators they'll say to say i hear them say uh, you know assets are based on supply and demand assets are based on supply and demand they're not based on supply and demand uh, clothes uh, are based on supply and demand food drink all of these are based on supply and demand which is why there's not a lot of price movement it's based on order flow it's like uh, an auction, which is why in the market there's a lot of volatility. It's very simple. So because of this, ladies and gentlemen, the pullback, when the price moves against the trend temporarily, uh, it's just about establishing whether the trend's going to continue. Once you're able to do that, and we're going to look at this now, it's the pullback's positive because it's giving you a better entry point. And that applies to both bullish and bearish trends. So Pullbacks can be used to enter a bit at a better entry point, uh, but when momentum is regained, so when the trend is continuing. The main difficulty is determining if the price is temporarily uh, going to move against us or if it will last for a longer period, so a different type of trend. So we need to first establish the trend on uh, longer term timeframes. This is going to help us a lot. Uh, we need to establish uh, which impulse wave we are attempting to trade. This is something that we're going to look at. Uh, we're going to measure the previous impulse waves. That's the next thing that we're going to do. Uh, and wait for momentum to be regained before speculating. So let's put uh, the first scenario. So this, for example, uh, we're not actually going to look. Actually, I think this is the NASDAQ. I haven't mentioned it here, but this is the NASDAQ, ladies and gentlemen. I can tell from the price. So what am I doing here? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm always, we're seeing a downward trend, very easy downward trend to trade. A lot of people have been very successful with this. Why? Because it's just really following the same pattern. Impulse wave retracement, impulse wave retracement, impulse wave retracement. So it's been a very easy uh, couple of weeks to trade. How can you have determined though that the trend is about to change? Uh, and if it was going to continue, if, it was going to continue, uh, that it, uh, you know, where to target, how much is it going to decline by? So what you do, ladies and gentlemen, is you measure 
the size of each wave. So this is an impulse wave. I measured it. So it's 2.18. I measured the next impulse wave again, it's 3%. I measured the next one, it's 1.99. I measured the next one here, so 3.20. And the next one, 2.54. And I'm also measuring the retracement. Retracement, retracement, retracement. I'm measuring everything. Uh, and I don't do it just as a one-off. I don't do it for one week and then don't do it again. I do it every single day, every single day. Uh, and I actually will start to ignore a lot the past, uh, you know, something that happened from over a month ago or, or maybe over two, three weeks ago. Uh, and then we start to use the new data. So keep that in mind as well. But what am I establishing by measuring the price movement? So you can see, the impulse wave, which is the waves in favor of the trend, and the corrective waves, price in favor, sorry, against the trend. So I'm measuring the smallest price movement. So you can see this is the smallest impulse wave, the largest impulse wave, and here we have five impulse waves. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm using the average as well. So what it's doing is it's giving me a bracket it's giving me a price range a target and it's saying to me ladies and gentlemen if the trend is going to continue if and i'll explain how i know it wasn't going to continue um based on that ladies and gentlemen know that if we were going to get a continuation of the trend this based on the traditional price movement the smallest wave is here the largest wave is here and on average is here. So somebody's uh, asked me a question, what is the most important, the smallest, the largest of the average? Uh, it depends on your risk appetite. If you've got a very high risk appetite, some people may be looking at either the average or between the average to the highest. Most people want to be as safe as possible and they look somewhere between the smallest, if not the smallest wave, uh, to the average. The most important is of course the average because it's looking at the traditional price movement, but a lot of people, especially professional traders, they give a lot of strong importance, you know, in this level here, between the smallest and the average, that level there. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if we were gonna see a continuation, I know that this is the area here, based on the traditional price movement. And of course, each wave is not the same, which is why we have the smallest, the average, and the largest as well. And if we get something different, let's say this time it comes in at 5%, then of course, I'm gonna to start to take that into consideration as part of my analysis, as part of my average. So, you know, this average figure is going to change as well. So it's always a reoccurring scenario that I keep measuring, keep amending. So I know here, ladies and gentlemen, that if it was a downward trend, that is my range there of significance. Now I'm measuring, retracements as well so you know this is the smallest retracement this is the largest retracement this is the average now if i'm looking at the largest uh retracement uh, sorry if i'm looking at the average retracement ladies and gentlemen um this price movement here it's uh 0 0.78 so number one it's a lot higher than the average and it's very very close to getting to the highest but most importantly, it's much higher than the average. And also now we have three lows which are higher. And we're attempting now to break onto a higher high as well. So this here is giving me this, uh, the indication that actually this downward trend is losing momentum. It could be losing momentum temporarily, but still I'm trading now. I'm not trading in you know five days time. So it's now this temporarily which is important to me so you can see by measuring this you're able to establish when the trend is going to end and if it's not going to end then it's going to continue where potentially to be aiming for okay and i'll give you another example you know let's say i'm using this average here uh let's say five averages and you know we've got this impulse wave starts retracing like this uh, I know on average, the retracement increases, sorry, declines to here. It doesn't decline today, it starts to increase. So I'm happy because 
it's a weak retracement. It's not gone below the average. Uh, it's not even near the average. So I'm quite confident that buyers are still controlling the market. And then based on the traditional price movement, this is the smallest, this is the average, this is the largest. So that is my range there. And even if you want to be super safe, you can aim for the smallest, or some people can say, if that's the smallest, I want to be super safe, and I want to trade slightly below the smallest. Okay, so this is again something people can take into consideration. Whereas, you know, if that was the smallest and the price declined to here, you know, I'm going to say to myself, that's enough price movement because traditionally that's not as much as we normally see. That's a nice price movement to say to me, uh, at least for the moment, stay out of the market, at least for the moment. So let's start looking at uh, scenarios. Let's start looking at trends and uh, strategies on actually how to enter the market. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, here we've got here uh, a 75 bar exponential moving average. Okay, so you can add it onto your MT5, 75 bar exponential moving average. Here we've got an oscillator which is known as an RS. I, it's on a period of 18, which I know is quite high, but here is being used as an indication or as to whether buyers or sellers are controlling the market. So ladies and gentlemen, we were mainly seeing indications of downward trends. Why? Because ladies and gentlemen, let's ignore the retracement, correction, impulse wave, the trend pattern for the moment. The price was mainly always below the 75 bar and also below the 50. So if we're between the 50 and 25 like here, um, then we have indication that the price is going to decline. If we're between the 50 and the 75, we have indication the price is going to increase. So ideally, we want the price to be below the 75 and below the 50 on the RSI. That gives us indication the price is going to decline. This is a two hour time frame. So of course, I'm going to also, in addition to this, switch onto a smaller time frame, and that's what I'm going to do on the next slide. So here, for example, you can see, let's clear this up. You can see in this area here, we very, very clearly have indications and uh, consecutive repeating indications that the price is going to decrease. Why? Because we're below the 75 and we're below the 50. Very simple. Um, and you can see the successful trades. You know, successful trade, yes, there's volatility. The pullbacks, like I said, can be used into our advantage to enter at a better price. Um, but you can see very clearly the indication is correct. So happy days. Um, the indication, though, is changing. This week it changed. Why did it change? So, number one, we opened on a bullish price gap here. So that's a positive thing. It's quite a large bullish price cap. So that's uh, quite positive. Uh, the oscillator went above the 50. It's managed to maintain above the 50 as well. So it's not just up and then just collapses after. It's maintaining above 50. So it gives me a stronger signal. Uh, and we also are above the 75 by exponential more than average. So we have indications here on the two hour for the German DAX, which is the GER30. Uh, some people may say, is, is it the 40? There is a DAX 40 as well, but I said the print asset. Um, but you can see here how we get a new signal, a signal that the price is going to start to increase. There's different reasons for that. Monetary, monetary policy adjustments, fiscal policy adjustments, uh, very low inflation, and so on and so forth. What am I doing, though? I'm not just looking at that and go, okay, great, uh, bye. Why? because there's volatility, there's pullbacks within the market. So, you know, look at this, you know, the price increases up to here. Do I want to buy here? This is a terrible entry point. This is what a lot of people say to me. You know, I see the price increasing. I'm thinking, great, okay, trend, perfect. Uh, enter a buy. What happens after that? The price declines. Uh, and of course, that's what, that's what people want to avoid, that people start to hate you know, these pullbacks and hate and feel uncomfortable with the fact that there's volatility within the market. This downward price movement, all this is allowing you to do is enter at a cheaper price. So we've established on this time frame 
that is an upward trend, at least for the moment. It could change, of course. It could change. But at the moment, it is an upward trend. So I don't need to establish on this five minute time frame that is an upward trend. I need to establish, number one, that the retracement is going to end. And number two, that there's enough momentum and price movement again in favor of the trend for me to start to speculate that the price is going to increase. Uh, and people say to me, you know, on the five minutes, sometimes I see indications and scenarios where I can speculate the decline. You can do that, but ideally you don't want conflicting signals or to be trading against the trend. When you look at a trend, 75% of the price movement is in favor of the trend. So why try and trade that 25%? instead of trying to trade that 75%. It's like, for example, if I hold a dice with six sides and on the dice on four of the sides, we have the number one and on two of the sides, we have the number two. Now roll the dice and I say to you, you have to pick one or the other. You're gonna pick the one which has four sides, not the one where it's less of a possibility for it to be in that direction. And the same thing happens with the trend. Why trade? against the trend when most of the price movement is in favor of the trend, in which case, even if your timing is incorrect, it's very forgiven by the market because momentum can be gained again. And even though, you know, it's temporarily the price moved against you, it corrects, goes to the break even and in a profit. So here we can see indications very clearly of a buy. We're above the 75, we're above the 50 on our side. So here we want to avoid this price movement here because it's a downward price movement. So it's against the trend. So conflicting signals. We don't want conflicting signals. We want signals indicating the same direction. So what do I do? Uh, we've got two indications here. We have moving averages, which are these lines here. Uh, the red is an 18 bar simple moving average. The yellow is an eight bar exponential moving average. And then we've got the MACD as well. Now, of course, we want upward crossovers. So you can see here the yellow cross is above the red upwards. Uh, and we also want uh, the MACD to be increasing like this as well. So these are the two signals, number one, but it's not enough based on this because it could cross over and the bars could increase, but then just collapse. So that's not enough. So we do want to see that, okay, but it's very simple. We want something slightly more to give us a better indication of the upward price movement. So what do you do? As it's retracing, okay, so we here we can see the price's retracement. Let's say we don't know the price is gonna move up again, like we can see in the chart. What do we do? We draw the Fibonacci retracement levels. This is just a strategy number one. We're going to look at alternatives as well. Based on this high and this low of the retracement, I use the Fibonacci retracement levels, in which case you just draw from the high to the low, the Fibonacci. As I do that, it will come up with these lines. So we've got one, two, three, four, five lines here, ladies and gentlemen. What do I do? You will notice that on one of the lines, it has a 60. I've got it at 60. On default, it could be 61, could be slightly more, could be at 62. I've got it at 60 though. So I want a slightly earlier entry, only slightly though. Uh, so what do I do? As the price starts to move back into my favor, into the favor of the trend, I just want there to be enough momentum for me to say, okay, it's gonna be an upward trend. Uh, which is basically at this 60 mark here. So if we, after retracement ends and starts to move back into our favor, as soon as it crosses above, not just to reach, crosses above this 60 mark, which is this red line, that's my signal that I should be entering now. Not a day later, not an hour later, not half an hour later, now. Whereas if I waited for the breakout, like I said at the very beginning, if I waited for the breakout, you know, the breakout levels here, would you have rather entered the buy here or rather have entered the buy here? Of course, everybody would have said, I would have rather have entered at the point you said at the, zero, at the 60, in which case 
the price moved 0.33% in your favor, uh, which is more than enough for a short-term daily trade rather than the breakout, which is here, in which case is almost half, okay? So this is very clearly, you can see here, why I'm stating, not the breakout, Fibonacci 60 mark. Um, and also you need to be careful that, you know, this retracement, it's a retracement. It didn't continue to decline to here, which is the previous low, in which case it's not a retracement, it's a correction. So I'm not, I'm not gonna speculate that upward price movement. Why? Because it's a stronger price movement against the trend. So I want to wait for momentum to be gained again and for me to be reassured that we are gonna see an upward price movement. Let's look at another example. This is the S&P 500. Of course, we look on the two hour, we ensure that we're above the 75, we're above the 50 on the oscillator as well. But we do the same thing. Here we have high, here we have the low. It's a retracement because we've not gone down to the previous low here. Based on that high and low, I've drawn the Fibonacci. So this is the high, this is the low, I've drawn the Fibonacci. We're waiting for enough momentum. As soon as the price, ladies and gentlemen, increases above the 60, I enter into the upward price movement. Uh, and this is the same scenario here. But how am I using this strategy? This is a different strategy. Here we've got three moving averages, okay? Uh, here we've got the yellow, which is 30, the green, which is 43, and the 63, which is the red, all exponential moving averages. Now, this is a five minute time frame, but again, we've already established on the two hour that buyers are controlling the market. So, again, we're not looking at conflicting signals. If the price retraces and declines between the yellow and green, and then starts to move in my favor, in favor of the trend, it's a strong signal. If it's between the green and red, it's a weak signal. If it's below the red, it's no signal. We don't consider a trade, okay? So what do I do? As soon as it declines and goes into the yellow between the green uh, and then loses momentum, so where does it lose momentum? It loses momentum on this candlestick here. I Count back three candlesticks. So this is one, two, and three. These are the last three candlesticks. And I draw the retracement Fibonacci levels between the highest points of these three candlesticks and the lowest points of these three candlesticks. And as soon as the price gains enough momentum to break above 60, I trade at the 60. As soon as it breaks above 60, I enter into the buy. And you can see there's plenty of upward price movement. Then it retraces again, same scenario. As soon as it drops back into the downward price movement, uh, I draw, I wait till it loses momentum. So it loses momentum here. I draw one, two, three. Okay, so these are the three candlesticks. I look at the high and the low. The high is here, the low is here. Again, I draw the Fibonacci levels, which is the, uh, and the important level is the 60. This is the 60, so this red line. And I trade upwards at this red line. Okay, again, a lot of price movement in my favor. Where do I put the stop loss? I put the stop loss just below the red line. So you can see nowhere on this chart is it hit my stop loss. Nowhere on this chart. And all of these trades are profitable trades. Uh, we've got a third signal here, ladies and gentlemen. Again, it declined. Uh, here into the range between the yellow and the green. Uh, so I count back one, two, three candlesticks. So this is the high, this is the low. I'm drawing my Fibonacci, the red line here is the breakout level. That's why I trade. Uh, and again, we can see upward price movement. We can see upward price movement throughout today's trading as well. Downward price movement, same scenario. Um, this is gold, ladies and gentlemen. The only thing I would be, uh, you know, saying to everybody is if we keep seeing more and more waves, more impulse waves, we need to start to be cautious, especially after uh, the fourth and fifth wave, because most trends and most trend theories state that a trend will have between three and five waves. So as we start to get to four and five, we really need to be cautious that 
you know, we've had a lot of price movement, we need to be slightly cautious now. Uh, unless there's a scenario, in which case we believe is going to continue. Could be fundamental reasons, could be all the flow reasons, whatever it may be. So we need to be cautious after five waves. So, you know, for example, here we've got one, here we've got two, here we've got three, now we're on four. So again, this is why I'm saying we need to be cautious. The fourth we can see now is on a higher level, or if not higher, at the same level. So this is indication number one that the trend, even maybe it's temporarily, it's going to lose momentum because we've now got a higher level, a higher low. Uh, and at the same time, it's the fifth impulse wave now. So potentially it's losing momentum at this point. So we need to be cautious about that. But again, we're using the same scenario. These three moving averages, okay? So again, if we go back just to make sure everybody's writing this down, 13 EMA, 43 EMA, 63 EMA as well. Uh, and on the next slide, we'll ask everybody what they think is going to happen to the price of the NASDAQ, if it's going to increase or decrease by the end of the week. So here we can see we get the impulse wave. Okay, happy days. We've got the impulse wave. Uh, then we get a retracement. The retracement loses momentum here. Or you could actually say it loses momentum here. Either way, it's more or less at the same price. Uh, but based on that, though, ladies and gentlemen, if we can count back three uh, candlesticks. So one, two, uh, three. So this is the low, this is the high. I draw my Fibonacci. As soon as the price drops below the 60, I trade and speculate the decline. My stop loss above the uh, red moving average, so the 63. Then we get downward price movement, a lot of downward price movement, happy days. Uh, then it retraces again, loses momentum here. So we, the main area is between the yellow and the green. If it goes between the green and the red, it's a weaker signal, but we can still take it into consideration. Red is a no-go. Uh, so again, loses momentum here. We count back three uh, candlesticks. So one, two, uh, three. I've done it slightly lower at this level, very simply because that's the low and the low is very uh, close to the lowest of the three candlesticks so it's very similar so i'm using that level because there's not much of a difference uh, and now i'm on the third wave so i'm being slightly more cautious i'm basically saying i want slightly more momentum um and again join the fibonacci we've got a 60 here so at this red line and we trade the downward price movement uh, and we've got the same scenario here as well so we have the low we have the high. This is a weaker signal because it's not between the yellow and the green, but it's now between the green and the red. So there's more momentum against the trend. So it's given us a different type of indication. It's a weaker indication. But again, you can see I'm drawing the Fibonacci. This is the breakout level. The price does still decline in that direction, but less. Instead of seeing uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.27, which is modern enough for short-term traders, uh, because don't forget this is a five-minute time frame, uh, but even 0 0.16, again, is more than enough. But let's say some people may have not uh, have put a take profit there, they would have exited the market here. This is where the stop loss is, because it's just above the red line there. So ladies and gentlemen, we've been speaking now for uh, one hour. So let's end the session. Let's very quickly have the last poll. Uh, let's ask everybody what they think is going to happen by the end of the week. So will the NASDAQ end the week higher than $17,650? Uh, $17, will it end higher? Will it end lower? So this is the last poll. This is the last slide as well. What will happen to the NASDAQ by Friday night? Will it end higher than $17,650 or will it not? So let's see how many people vote. I've got not everybody voting, almost halfway. I'll give people just 15 more seconds, only 15 more seconds. We're at halfway now. So half of the viewers have voted. Just over half. Very interesting. Only give people five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. So let's end it there.
or actually share uh, the uh, results. So you can see here from individuals that answered, uh, which is just over 50% of people answered, 86% um, uh, of individuals believe that it's going to end higher. 14% uh, believe that it's not going to end higher. By This is by the end of the week, so by Friday night. So very interesting, very interesting. So this is what people think, ladies and gentlemen. So ladies and gentlemen, we're at the end of today's webinar. Uh, hopefully everybody found it educational. Um, of course, everybody trade safe, trade responsibly. Um, I also, uh, this is a great opportunity now if people want to ask uh, questions as well, of course. So let's see if people have some questions. I can see some people are writing. I've got one question here. Uh, where can we get more information about order flow? Uh, order flow, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's different tools that you uh, can use. Uh, I'll actually reply uh, some tools for order flow uh, to this individual. So we've got uh, different things within the market you can use. So Delta statistics, uh, cum Relative Delta, Delta statistics. Uh, we have the depth of market, which is the dome. Then we have all the flow charts. So I've just uh, messaged that to you. Um, so you have it written down. If you want to take a photo of it or screenshots, absolutely fine. These are the main types of um, uh, order flow tools, uh, but even just by going on Google and typing order flow, order flow analysis, order flow charts, uh, and so on and so forth, the, there's a lot of information there for you. Please say the moving averages again, of course. So for these three, which is a setup for the five minute time frame, keep in mind, it may not be appropriate for other time frames. Uh, here we've got three moving averages. You can see it's written down here. So 13 EMA, so exponential moving average, 43, 63. Now, if you want to see this setup, which is a very, very important setup, uh, there's one moving average here, which is this, which is a 75 uh, period exponential moving average on the two hours. So the 75 bar on the two hour is a very important, well-known moving average for uh, the financial trading markets. So let's end today's webinar. Um, trade safe, trade responsibly. Let's end it because I can see most people have left and I can't see any more questions. Uh, hopefully everybody found it enjoyable and educational um, and we'll speak again very, very soon. Of course, if you have any questions, uh, or want more information or even one-on-one -on -one sessions, feel free to get into contact with us uh, or support uh, or your account manager as well. So let's end it today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and have a good evening and goodbye.